The people that change are you, the ones that said a few months ago, a few weeks ago, that you weren't going to vote for the complicity of genocide. And then Joe Biden dropped out and she's taking over. And now all of you guys switched, asking for nothing, asking for nothing. It's funny that I see a lot of people attacking voters and saying, you have to do this and shaming them. And before you come into my comments and start doing the repeat of what everybody else has already done, go back 10 months and watch the videos that I made on this exact topic. I already said everything you guys said. You guys aren't saying anything new. I already fucking said it. But those videos were also before we saw video after video after video of dead children. I saw a video yesterday of a baby's head, a decapitated baby being put in a body bag. What I've learned and actually the Democratic Party and all of you should have learned this if you voted in 2016 and Hillary Clinton lost. It doesn't work. Shaming people and attacking people and trying to bully people may overwhelm them for a little bit, but it doesn't actually work. And you're, you're focusing on the wrong people. It is the job of the politician to earn the votes. It is, let me... I know a lot of you aren't getting this because a lot of you have a celebrity worship problem. A lot of you have a power worship problem. You worship the powerful. So instead of looking at Kamala Harris as a politician that needs to earn your vote, that should be held accountable, working on behalf of you, you look at her as a celebrity and the presidency as her way to be historic and her self-actualization because you have a celebrity worship problem. But that's not how it is supposed to be. It is supposed to be that she is earning your vote. Going after regular people and attacking them is a waste of time. It makes me question how much you actually do care. Because if you are spending all of your time in people's comments, bullying them and harassing them and telling them that they need to vote this way and making content about it, you know what you're not doing? Canvassing. You know what you're not doing? Making calls for Kamala Harris. You know what you're not doing? Knocking on doors. If you actually care about getting Kamala Harris elected and care about keeping Trump out of the White House, first and foremost, stop trivializing people that care about what's happening in Gaza. Stop acting like it's, oh, you're just wanting to vote for something over there. Over there. It's not over there. It's our money. It's your paycheck. It's money coming out of your paycheck to pay for those bombs that are dropped on children's head that decapitate them. I understand Americans are America-centric chauvinists and we are always up our own ass and don't think about anything but ourselves in our own context. I get that. But you shouldn't be shaming people that care about what's happening in Gaza because what happens around the world is directly impacted by our country. Our foreign policy has direct implications all around the world and not just what's happening in Gaza. Because of our policy, tens of thousands of Ukrainians are dead. They could have ended that war in Ukraine within a couple months of it starting, but now tens of thousands of Ukrainians and Russians are dead because our country and the UK didn't want to end it. When you are voting, you need to understand and take into consideration the fact that our choices in foreign policy affect the entire world. And I'm not saying that in a shaming way because honestly, I used to not. As an American, being somebody who is very chauvinistic American, America-centric, can't really think outside of the context of America, I used to not think about any political issue that was outside of our borders. But that has changed, and I am encouraging you to change that and to learn about the ways in which our choices as a country affects countries all over the world. One more time for the people in the back. It is the job of the politician to earn the votes of the voters, to change policy in order to get more votes. If she wants more votes, she needs to radically shift policy, not rhetoric, policy, when it comes to the Israeli regime. Now, if she wants people that care about Gaza to consider voting for her. It is the job of the politician to move their positions in order to earn votes not the other way around. And don't be naive and be like, just like vote for her and hope that like maybe she'll like change like once she gets into, uh, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. And you know what? You guys seem to understand that when it came to Biden. We yelled at him constantly, protested him constantly, have been telling him to get out of the race constantly. And you understood that, but you don't understand it now? If you want anti-genocide folks to vote for Kamala Harris, you need to be on her campaign's ass about moving their position now, not the voter. Yeah, you're not alone. The gaslighting has been absolutely insane. Go look at the comments on that video. Look at the comments on that video. They are a dumpster fire. I am so embarrassed 
embarrassed for the people that are commenting on that video. Just don't comment. Just don't comment and show your whole ass. People coming on that video that clearly didn't watch it. Because had you bothered watching it, and now I'm addressing all the embarrassing commenters on that video, not the comments that I added here. If you would have watched it, your question would have been answered and you wouldn't have embarrassed yourself by commenting the shit that you did. Please stop embarrassing yourselves. People are like, what's the plan? I say what the plan is. I say what the plan is. People are like, aren't you uh, focusing and like worried about like Trump and Project 2025? Bitch, I'm way ahead of you. I've been talking about that for months. I already said in the last video, I made a video months ago, 10 months ago, talking about this. Months ago saying, okay, we need to really think about what we're doing here in order to try to prevent a Trump presidency and the threat of fascism months and months and months ago. And what's really funny, some of you same people that came after me hardcore on that video 10 months ago when I was criticizing people for just saying that they weren't gonna vote for Biden without thinking of the strategic implications of that decision because you guys said you were so opposed to what was happening in Gaza and this was before we saw the genocide unfold on our screen and were the people that went into my comments back on that video and said, you're not thinking about Mina and people of color around the world and Project 2025 has already been happening to us so stop fear mongering about it and said back then you're so privileged for talking about project 2025 and saying that we should vote for Biden have done a full ass 180 and are now using those exact same tactics to defend what you previously were opposing which one is it you rodeo clowns is it privileged to vote for a candidate complicit in genocide or is it privileged to oppose it which one is it this week I'm gonna need you to take that shit elsewhere because it's not gonna work here I know that the internet is where nuance goes to die and I know that none of you thought before you came in here and thought you were being really cute in the comments, but you're embarrassing. And if you don't have the capacity to sit through a five minute video, that's cool. Don't comment, keep it moving. Listen, I totally understand this. And this is nothing, no hate toward you. I'm talking generally about leftists. I was talking, having this conversation months ago when a lot of the people who claim to be leftists were running up and down my comments and stitching my videos to talk about how awful it was that I said that we need to be strategic about the way that we vote and how it's going to impact this country and all the countries around the world. There were creators on here that at the time that I was like, hey leftists, what are your plans if you don't want to vote for Joe Biden for harm reduction that were like, how dare you suggest I vote for genocide Joe, only to five seconds later be like, Mamala, did you forget they're in the same administration? It's literally this, but they're not even being like, oh, well, I don't like Kamala. This is what I oppose. This is how I'm gonna fight her, but it's harm reduction. No, they're celebrating it as if she just fell out of a coconut tree and doesn't have a record. What I'm pointing out is just how interesting the enthusiasm is. Because when I made a video talking about the importance of voting and harm reduction, nine, 10 months ago. The amount of stitches that self-righteous leftists made of my video talking about how, how could I say that and genocide was a line for them that they're not gonna cross are literally the same people that are putting Brad Summer in their profiles and now defending Kamala Harris and now saying, hey, you know, the thing is, is that we gotta think about harm reduction, you know? That is what I'm saying is just amazing about it. Again, I don't ever, ever, ever discourage people from voting. If you watch any of my content or you know any of my content, I vote in all my local elections. What I find interesting about it is that the same people that were down my fucking throat 10 months ago, before all of the carnage that we've seen in the genocide on video over the last 10 months, were telling me that I was a bad person, okay? Because I needed to understand that they had moral lines. Immediately, immediately jump to whitewash Kamala Harris's record, to act like that she wasn't on the ticket with him, to act like that she's not married to a whole ass Zionist and that her position on Israel is not the same. Suddenly they understand the nuance. Suddenly they understand the nuance. Suddenly they're ready to have that conversation. They were screeching at me from their perch about 10 months ago. Yeah, I see you. I see all you fake motherfucker, fake leftists that made videos and stitches and blew up my comments about how awful it was that I even suggested voting for Biden as a strategic choice for harm reduction. And this was before we saw the carnage that has happened in Gaza. Now suddenly turn around and be like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Kamala, Queen Kamala, oh my gosh, yes, Queen. You're full of shit. I can't stand leftists, and I am one. Mostly, kind of. You guys drive me 
fucking crazy because you are so full of shit. You are so much more interested in appearing virtuous than being virtuous. You are so much more interested in appearing to be helpful than actually being helpful. Kamala Harris's policies are no different on Israel than Biden's are. Yet you had all the smoke for Biden. So much of it but none for Kamala Harris. And not only do you not have any smoke for Kamala Harris, you don't even have a critique. You went from raking people over the coals for talking about voting in a way that reduces harm to now pretending that she didn't sit right next to him as he made every decision that he made on foreign policy. The same people that use people of color as a cudgel back then to go harm reduction for who? You guys are white. Weaponizing people of color to get people to vote against Joe Biden to now doing a 180 and going, what about people of color? You gotta vote for Kamala. You guys are so fucking cringe. It would be less cringe at least if you weren't so self-righteous but you still wanna sit there and talk about the revolution as if you've done shit. You guys can't even watch a GoFundMe that I made trying to raise money from Gaza all the way through and comment on it, but I'm supposed to believe you're organizing for a revolution. The same fucking people that don't shut the fuck up about how we need revolution now, but then you all shit your pants when Angie tried to create a space for people to come together and build community and relentlessly attacked her for daring to get you off the internet for a second to actually go talk about all your revolutionary ideas ideas in real life, who are now jumping on the brat summer Kamala train, are also the same people that I don't see doing anything about trying to organize the way that our system actually functions. Why haven't you done anything to fight for ranked choice voting? What are you doing to organize around making the electoral college irrelevant? And I don't mean a constitutional amendment. I'm talking about initiatives that states do in order to pledge their electoral college votes to whoever wins the popular vote, thus making the electoral college irrelevant. Where you be? I bet many of you don't even know what the fuck that is. How about gerrymandering? How many of you are getting involved in your local communities to fight gerrymandering? And listen, I understand that like, it's a really, really, really stressful time in the world and people are overwhelmed and people act off their emotions. And it's like, we're living in like unprecedented times where shit is happening at like record speed. So I'm going to try to give people grace. I'm gonna try to cut people some slack, but I just can't help but just look at some of you, some of you same people that were so self-righteous toward me because of the video that I made, now going 10 steps fucking further than I did and acting like nothing ever happened. I don't expect that you would know my content or have watched all my content. You've probably never seen me before and this video is the first one that you saw. I would love to vote for the first black woman president the first woman president, the first Southeast Asian woman president. I would love that. I wanna be excited about it. I understand that Trump is a fascist. I understand that Project 2025 is not a joke. It is serious and they have full plans to implement it. I have made many videos criticizing my own side about the fact that we talk about organizing and revolution and this and that and don't do anything. Meanwhile, the right wing, they always vote, they organize and they play the long game. So I have no doubt that if Trump were to get back in office, it would probably be the last election we had and they would absolutely implement Project 2025. I am also under no illusion that Trump will be vicious to the Palestinians, under no illusion. I know Miriam Adelson gave him $100 million to annex the occupied West Bank. I know that as a trans non-binary person, I don't have to worry about that because I live in a blue state. I live in New York. I also know that my state is going to go to Kamala Harris no matter what, because that's how our system works. What we need to be worrying about is places like Michigan. What the leftists who did a 180 and blue MAGA and the libs need to understand is that they need to get the votes of the people in Michigan. They need to convince Arab American voters. They need to convince Muslim voters in places like Michigan. People berating and attacking Rashida Tlaib or all the voters in Michigan is not going to do shit. It's certainly not going to bring their loved ones back from the dead, all of their loved ones who have been massacred in Gaza. So I will say it again. I would love to be able to vote for Kamala Harris. I would love to be able to see the first black woman president elected. And what everybody should be doing is understanding and listening to Muslim voters, listening to Arab American voters, listening to the people in the swing states who've had family members and entire bloodlines wiped out because of the genocide in Gaza. The energy should be focused on pushing Kamala Harris now, pressuring her now to end the genocide 
genocide in Gaza, stop arms shipments to the Israeli regime, and completely change course from the previous administration. I am telling you right now, that is how she'll have a chance of winning. So people who are putting their energy into attacking Muslim and Arab voters need to be focusing on pushing Kamala Harris. People can be excited at the prospect of the first black woman president ever, but at the very same time, you need to understand that just because somebody holds a certain identity doesn't mean that they're going to act in the interest of the people or those communities when they're in power. And if you have any doubt about that, go back and look at Barack Obama's record. I never tell people not to vote. I think voting is important. It is a tool. I never say it's the end all be all because people always go to like wild extremes. It's either like voting will fix everything. All we have to do is vote and then we can go back to just being passive consumers in our society. And I'm not just talking about president. I'm talking about every election. I vote in every local election and the turnout's always abysmal. Or you have the Voting is worthless, it's totally useless. What we actually need is a revolution. And then that's the beginning and the end of the discussion and they just sit out and right-wing fascists take power. Of course, voting is not the end-all be-all, but it is a tool. I always say this in the toolbox. You need to be active in your community with protesting and organizing and voting is one of those things. You don't have to be under any delusion that voting is gonna save anything, but you shouldn't seed something that they work really, really hard to suppress a lot of people from being able to do so right-wing fascists can get more votes. The whiplash though of the so-called left being like, Kamala Harris and all of Biden's administration shouldn't have a moment of peace because we should be protesting wherever they go because of the genocide in Gaza. Five seconds and one coconut meme later. Get out of here racist, it's time for Queen Kamala.